Welcome to the R video tutorial of One Way Inova in R part one. All right, we're gonna use the Cycler CPK.CSV data set that we've been playing with before. I have it on my desktop and I'm gonna read it in. Just as a disclaimer, this is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University, but anybody is free to use it. All right, so let's read in this data here that's on my desktop. We, if you don't have the data, there's a link in the description that will take you to the repository for it. Uh, notice that we have subject, age, gender, treatment, CPK1, CPK2, CPK3, and CPK4. Right now, all we're going to play with is the CPK1 data set, or the, the data just from their time one measurement. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to look at how the treatment works across this uh, various time point. Okay, so we have CPK1, we have treatment, we want to see what happens. Now, the first thing I would probably recommend you do is just do a box plot of this, okay? Uh, just so you can see, and I know you, we've done this in a previous video, but if you look at this, you can see what's going on here. So let's say I've got here my cycler one dollar sign, and I'm interested in CPK1, and I'm going to put that against cycler if I can spell it correctly today, one, and I'm gonna put that against our treatment, okay? And I just wanna look at this really quick just to see if it looks like any differences exist because often that's the very first thing you should do before you jump into getting some tests and p-values. So if I do this and I zoom in, it surely looks like there are differences here. If you notice, the high group is much lower than the none group. The none groups are way over here, but it's hard to tell between these two and these two whether there's a real difference. Maybe if you're given somebody this treatment, maybe medium's more than enough uh, to elicit the response that you want, which is driving down this creatinine, I guess, protein. Okay, so let's jump into this. It looks like there are differences, so if we don't find differences, we should be worried. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is use a function that we've actually used before, and I'm going to show you two ways to do this. So we're going to do first cycler one, and I'm just going to call it LM. We've used the linear model function in the regression videos, if you remember those. If you haven't watched those, you might want to go look at them real quick. Uh, so what we would do is we put our response, which is our cycler one dot, or we can actually write it this way just to make our lives easier, cycler one, CPK one, and treatment. And then we can put in here data equals cycler one. And this will create a linear model for us. And all ANOVAs are a linear model, but they're a specific type of linear model uh, where the covariates or the predictors are actually factors is one way to think about it. Um, if you're a real statistician, you know that it's actually much more complicated than that. Uh, but for the way you can think about ANOVA for the average person is, is my predictor continuous or discrete? If it's discrete, as in a treatment, it's probably gonna be an ANOVA. All right, so then all we have to do is, well, we could look at this and see what this says. We could do a summary on this, summary cycler1.lm and this will show you, this would show you the results as if you were looking at a regression and you can see here that there is your coefficients and notice you have a treatment low treatment medium treatment none notice there's no treatment high and that's actually a reference treatment uh, so just keep that in mind and notice some of these are significant and some of them aren't but what they don't tell us is if any of these are different from the other groups, and that's really what we want to know. These are testing whether they're different from zero, and that is not at all what we're after. So to get an ANOVA test is pretty easy. All I have to do is type ANOVA, and then cycler1.lm, and if I run this, out pops an ANOVA table. So it says my response is CPK1. You can see I have my treatment, which is my source uh, that I'm using. Uh, I have three degrees of freedom. Why three degrees of freedom? Well, it's the number of groups minus one. We had four treatment groups. Minus one is three. This gives us the residuals. Here's our residual degrees of freedom. 
Uh, remember, there were 40 participants, and so this is the number of people minus the number of treatments, and that will give us our group, our degrees of freedom here. And you can see our sums of squares, mean squares, F value, and more importantly, the P value associated with this. And if you look at this, this is a really, really small number. Some of you might be, not be used to looking at scientific notation, but this is a small number. It has 12 zeros in front of the eight. Okay, so. We have generated an ANOVA this way. There's also another function that you can use in R that will do a similar task, okay? So I'm just gonna take and copy this, and here I'm gonna put in here AOV, because that's the function we're gonna use instead of LM. It creates a similar type object, and it makes it easier to deal with certain things. So if I do this, I can actually look at cycler1.aov and see what it tells me. And notice it gives me sort of a small ANOVA table. It just doesn't give me any test or anything like that. Um, so what I can do here is just do summary of this and see what the summary says. So I'm gonna do cycler1.aov and run this. And notice I get the ANOVA table again, but this time I got the ANOVA table from using summary. I didn't get the ANOVA table from using ANOVA. So they work a little bit different, and I just wanted to show you the difference uh, between the two because sometimes it's more advantageous to use the LM function, and sometimes it's more advantageous to use the AOV function. They work very similarly in terms of the syntax, uh, so just be aware of that. We should probably put some comments in here. So ANOVA using... I can spell this, the LM function. And then here is a Nova comment here using the AOV function. And they're pretty easy to do. Um, notice that we did find that these numbers, these p-values are really, really small, uh, which means we did find some differences. And that's what we were expecting to find from the box plot. So that's what we should put up here, box plot to visually inspect for differences. If I can type today. All right, so we've got this set up. We now can run an ANOVA. This gives us the test for the hypothesis. Are there any differences? Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at ANOVA. It doesn't tell you which ones are different. It only tells you if there are differences. And sure enough, we found that in this data set that we're looking at for this Cycler CPK1 time point that there are differences across the treatment groups. So the next question would become, where are the differences? And that is what we're going to do in our next video.